All right, this episode comes with a fair warning. If you are not someone who takes action, this will not be a great episode for you. If you're someone who just likes to listen and never implement anything, this is not for you. However, if you are someone who's ready to make a sale within the next seven days, this is the perfect episode for you. If you're someone that wants people literally reaching out to you, asking how to work with you or how you can help them, this episode is for you. But it will require you to do something. It will require you to take some sort of action. Now, I know all of you guys or some of you guys won't do it, but I'm hoping that a good portion of you will. So if you're ready to start getting people to DM you, if you're ready to start taking action, doing things a little bit differently, and finally taking advice or taking action on the advice that I have been giving, now is the time to do it because I have a challenge for you inside this episode and it's gonna have to be done in the next seven days. So if you're ready for that, well, keep on listening. Hi, I'm Brandon Lucero, and you're about to experience the new way to thrive in business, entrepreneurship, and life by leaning into who you are, what you love, and standing up for what you want to create. Get ready, because this is where we go against the grain, say no to outdated society norms, and we say yes to change in order to create a happier, more fulfilled world. Welcome to the New Generation Entrepreneur Podcast. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the New Generation Entrepreneur Podcast. Today, we're going to be doing things a little different. Uh, If you've been a listener of the podcast and you have not taken action on anything that I have taught, if you've been inside one of my programs and you're still not taking action on the things that you need to take action on, well, this podcast episode is for you. Or even if you have been taking action, but you're like, Brandon, I just, I need some sales. Well, this is dedicated to you. This today is going to be a result-focused podcast. I literally want you to get a result in the next seven days. If you take action on one, two, or three of the things that I talk about today on this podcast, I am hoping and I am fairly confident that you will get results. Now, you probably get a little bit of faster results if you currently have an audience. If you have no audience and you're just starting out and you're like, I don't have any momentum or anything anywhere to go, The results might take a little bit longer, but what I am hoping is that for the majority of you guys that take action today, you will get a result. And here's what I want you to do. If you get a result within the next seven days or even 14 days, but the goal is seven days, I want you to DM me on Instagram. So just send me a DM that could be a voice note. It could be written out. I want you to share that result with me. And I personally am going to be responding back to you, not my team, not our social media manager, me. I'm going to be DMing you. I'm going to have a conversation with you. I'm going to see how it went, what you did. And is there a way that we can now get you to take another action to get another result? And the ultimate plan here is I actually want you to close a customer. And that could be a sale on a product, could be a one-on-one person. But I promise you guys right now that there are people inside of your audience that are a little bit curious as to what you do. There's people right now that have probably are wondering, you know, like what your offer is or how you can help, or they're intrigued because they saw a piece of content. They maybe they've been on your list for a while, but they haven't actually pulled the trigger on getting things fixed. And there's a reason why that's happening. And part of the reasons is because your messaging hasn't compelled them enough or your communication hasn't compelled them enough to actually take that next step. Or you haven't provided what the next step is or you haven't been clear on that you have an offer. Now, all of that's gonna shift and change today. So I'm hoping within the next 30 minutes, I can give you three very actionable things today to get someone in your audience who's been lurking for a while to finally DM you and ask, how can I work with you, okay? So let's go ahead and hop in. Now, before we do, hopefully you guys have noticed, give you a little life update here. Um, One of the things we've been doing inside of our own content is trying to give a little bit more behind the scenes, apparently, I am told that people like it when I share things about my personal life. So, <laughs> so AKA my team saying like, it's a personal brain, right? And get a little more personal. I'm like, okay. Um, hopefully if you're watching on YouTube, you've noticed a huge increase in quality of our videos. So we have our actual studio here in our office. And Matt, who lives in Colorado, um, is not here in person with me anymore, but he can remotely tap in if he needs to. But we have this really cool setup in my office that I can break down and set up and I don't know, two, 
not two minutes, but maybe like five to 10 minutes. I'm really liking it. It looks really good. And hopefully you're on the uh, audio side. You guys can notice a, a difference as well. All right, let's hop into this. Where do we want to start? So the goal here again is to get someone to DM you. Okay. And one of the most effective things that we've seen or qual I guess qualifications with messaging when you know it's working is getting people to DM you. And sometimes it's hard with messaging. So with me, and, and I know a lot of mindset coaches and people out there will agree with this, is sometimes it's hard for me to come up with like tangible results of messaging because sometimes messaging is this fluffy, invisible, um, non-tangible thing. It's kind of like mindset. How do you know when mindset is fixed or working or not broken or being healed or, you know, whatever, improving, you know, if I was teaching strategy, like a webinar strategy, it's very clear. Like what are the sales you're getting? You know, there's very tangible data driven indicators that tell you, cool, this is working. It's on, on the right way with messaging. There's not really big, huge indicators. You know, it's, everyone's a little bit different. You know, someone who's at $10,000 a year inside of their business um, there's different ways to determine if their messaging is working versus, you know, someone at, at seven figures. And so when we are able to find those things, like those indicators, we really kind of lean into it and getting DMs is one of those things. So getting people to DM you is one of those indicators that we know, okay, great. So messaging is working. And inside of your own brain, you guys want to look for those things. What are those indicators? So when I tell someone they're, you know, if I'm a mindset coach, like their mindset is fixed when, and I can come up with those things. For me, I go, when their messaging is working, what happens inside of their life? And when I start to do that, I start to get these tangible things. Great, more DMs, more sales. And then I can attach numbers to those. I can craft promises from those. I can craft desires from those. So I could say things like in a headline on an ad, want to get three people this week DMing you to work with you just by changing the language you use. So now I can create different headlines. So for me, I'm, I've been looking at like, okay, and my team actually had a meeting today for two or three hours, kind of outlining our, this new offer we want to create this new process, sales process we want to create and getting clear on what is our offer? What's our next evolution. And that is one of the things is, when it comes to messaging, our next evolution is going to be focused on data-driven results and delivering data-driven results to our, our clients. And one of those is DMs. And that's kind of what inspired today's episode. And so what we want to do today is I want to get you DMs and I want you to share the results with me. And I want to see if I can get you more DMs. And I want to see what that person said. And yeah, it is a little bit selfish of me. Like there is a hidden agenda here. Obviously I want to get you results. That's goal number one. Goal number two, I just want to see how it went with you. And I'm going to, I, I mean, we have, we, we get roughly 2000 downloads on, on every episode we do. So I know I'm kind of opening myself up to having hundreds of conversations with people, but I don't care. I'll, that's what we need to do. And so if you guys DM me your results and how it went for you, I will help you get more of it personally in my DMS on Instagram. Okay. So let's start with step number one. What is the first thing that you need to do? If you've been in my ecosystem for a while, you probably already know what this one is, but I'm going to explain it in a new and different way that I've never explained it before. This new and different way is how we structure a belief in a solution inside of a thought reversal. So the very first thing that I want you to do is I want you to come up with a big misconception or old tactic that is causing a problem inside of your audience's life. What I do not want you to do here is I do not want you to think about a pet peeve. I do not want you to think about a limiting belief. This is not about limiting belief. I don't want you to think about what you know the problem is. I want you to pretend you're the audience member. Pretend you're trying to learn everything you need to learn and it's your audience and they're trying to accomplish something. What are they doing right now? Because everyone else tells them this is what they should be doing. That is actually causing a problem in their life. That's not working. Not only is it not working, but it's actually causing the problem. Now this may take some time. 
This is probably not something you can brainstorm up in, in, a, in a minute. You might need to think about this for a bit. And I'm going to give you an example here in a second, but you, I want you to identify what one of those things are. Again, don't get caught up in what you know the problem is or what you're aware of. Get into the awareness level of your audience. So I'm going to give you an example. When we first started teaching messaging, the biggest problem was that people's content was not standing out and was not getting engagement. I knew the problem was messaging. The audience didn't know that yet. Their awareness level was not there yet. Things have changed since then. There's a lot more people coming in already knowing that messaging is the problem. But that's a big trap that people get into is, is they start communicating from where they're at and the things they're aware of and what they realize. And the audience hasn't realized any of that stuff yet. And then you don't connect with them. So remember, get in your audience's head. Okay. So come up with what that is. Let me give you a couple examples of how this may look. For example, for me, one of the biggest misconceptions in all tactics is people tell you to do, give your uh, how-to content, give your best stuff away for free, do a bunch of how-to content and you'll build an audience. And although that's true in, in some cases, it's becoming more and more of the majority of people who don't see results doing that because you blend in and you say the same thing as everyone else. And that's a big misconception is that how to content and doing it 100% of the time and giving your best stuff away for free is going to build an audience. So I look at that and go, that's a huge misconception. It's an old tactic. And to be honest with you, it's causing a problem. So if we were to look around and the different um, spaces, like I, I know I've, we've worked with a lot of dog trainers over the years. So I know that um, a lot of the way that dog training has been taught actually causes a big problem. For example, a lot of the tactic people have learned to walk your dog on a leash so the dog doesn't pull actually causes more aggression in the dog if you're not doing it carefully. And so, but there's a lot of dog trainers that teach it, right? Or uh, discipline. A lot of Dog trainers will teach discipline as a way to train your dog, but then that could cause anxiety or again, anger inside of the dog as well. And so what we want to do is look inside of your space. Like what are the things that have just been taught for so long that are either never really worked or kind of outdated and don't work. Now this might take a little bit of time to think about, but this is going to be really, really, really valuable for you because it's also going to help you to understand the problem you solve and why it's there. The people with the strongest messaging and copy are the ones that actually truly understand the one problem they're here to solve. And a lot of us are very generalized in the problems that we solve. So when you start to understand, here's the biggest misconception or the biggest tactic that people are using that doesn't work anymore, you can now ask yourself, well, what problems does this cause? So when I ask myself, okay, cool, Brandon, when people do how-to content, educational content over and over again, what problems does this cause? Well, it causes them to remain plateaued um, for three months or more in sales and audience. It causes them to you know, get stuck in the cycle of posting every day, and not seeing results and having a ton of wasted time. It makes them feel like even like just confused because they know they're delivering gold and people aren't paying attention. And all of that stems from one misconception that I've identified a while ago. So what I want you to do is I want you to identify a misconception. Again, this is do not go after a limiting belief or a pet peeve that they might have. Go after an actual real tactic process or way of doing things that doesn't work, and even better, not only does it not work, but it actually is causing the problem that they want to get fixed, and they're not aware of it yet. If you can find that, this is going to work really well for you, okay? So what I want you to do is then to follow the traditional thought reversal formula. If you've been on this podcast for any amount of time, you should know what this is. If you don't, you can go to YouTube, type in thought reversal, look at our video. We have a whole framework on it. You can even just go back to a past episode on this podcast. We talk about thought reversals all the time. So I want you to do a thought reversal topic on it. When you come up with the title, I want you to do it one of two ways. And I'm going to give you guys a whole example here in a second. Okay. The title of your content, once you identify what that belief is, or once you identify what the misconception or the old tactic is, 
All I want you to do is to say that it doesn't work or ask them if it still works. So let me give you an example. If I was to do this, I would say, how to content is not how to build an audience online. That's the title of my content. Or I'm gonna ask it in the frame, in the in a question, okay? So you would ask it as, is how to content really the best way to grow a business online? Question mark. Okay, so two ways. One's aggressive, one's not aggressive, but that's those are the two ways that I want you to title this piece of content. Now, keep in mind this piece of content can be a video, an image, or we can do it as an email. Or if you guys want to just go crazy and you're like, Brandon, I'm totally dedicated to like getting a client closed this week, you can do all three of it. Do it as an email to your list, do it as a video, do it as a, um, a live stream or whatever, but I would say at least, or an image, uh, do it as a, at least as a video and an email. And if you wanna do it as an image, great, go ahead and do it. So that's gonna be the title. If you do it as an image, the title literally is on the image. So you can hold a post-it note with, the, with that title on it, and then the script will become your caption, okay? If you're doing it as an email, the headline is literally going to be the title of that piece of content. If you're doing it as a video, the title is literally gonna be in that top bar, okay? So step one, start a thought reversal video based off of misconception of an old tactic or way of operating that doesn't work anymore or is actually causing the problem. Uh, you can do multiple if you want. You can do multiple and test them and tweak them and see, see which one works, okay? Now what I want you to do in this thought reversal is I want you to get very specific on the problem. So I'm gonna teach you guys something that I haven't taught before, when it, even to my students. I haven't taught this to you guys yet, so hopefully you guys are paying attention. What I want you to do is I want you to get very specific on the problem and the second step of the thought reversal. So let me give, let me give you an example. So when we do a thought reversal, we're just gonna say the title. So the if the title is how to content is not how to build a business online, we would say, Look, how-to content is not how to build a business online. So that's just the, that's step number one. Or we're gonna say something like, is how-to content really the best way to build a business online? That is what we're talking about today. That's, the, that's it. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna live in compassion. We're gonna say something like, look, I understand why you think how-to content is the best way to do something and build a business online because that's what everyone is telling us. So I call it live in compassion. You're gonna be like, I understand why you think that, I get it, I totally understand, but we're gonna tack something onto the end of that, which is a very specific problem. So you're gonna say, look, I understand why you think that every guru out there is telling you to give your best stuff away for free and do a ton of how-to content, but when you do that, what happens to most people is they actually get plateaued and, and you stay plateaued for three months or more in sales and audience growth, and you just stop growing, and that could be at zero dollars, and or it could be at a million dollars a year. So you're going to tack on a very specific problem they're experiencing because they've been doing the thing that you know they shouldn't be doing. So what I do is I say, okay, people, what have people that have been doing how-to content? What have they been experiencing because they're doing how-to content? And I tack that just one sentence. I tack that on the end of the live and compassion part. Okay. So again. When you do this thought reversal video, first thing you need to do is find out what that misconception or tactic is. Then what you need to do after that is turn it into a title. And all you're gonna do is ask in the form of a question, is this the best way of doing something? Or just stating that it is not the best way of doing something. Then you're gonna put your script together. Your script's gonna start off by just repeating the title. Then you're gonna live in compassion and say, look, I understand why you think that. And then you're gonna say, if you have been doing that, here's a problem that you're likely experiencing. Now here's the why we're doing here's why we're doing this is if you want get if you want to get people to DM you and you want them to DM you now and like today within the next 7 days is kind of the goal here we need to get them to self identify that we are talking about them we need them to make the decision that what we're saying is relevant to them that they are the person we're talking to and what tries what most people do is they try to convince everyone, hey, this is for you, come on in, this is for you. No, I want them to come up with their own decision, their own conclusion that this is where they need to be and I'm the person to help them. And when we can very accurately and specifically describe their pain and what they're doing, they will self-identify. They will go, that is me, that is relevant to me, I'm in. They're talking about me. And that's what we wanna do with this thought reversal, okay? 
So then what we're going to do is we're going to follow the rest of the traditional thought reversal format. We're going to move into the next phase of that, of that script. And we're just going to come up with counter examples, chunk up or chunk down or use a metaphor analogy. So now what we do is we just need to discredit. All we need to do is discredit the belief. So for me, what I like to do is I find counter examples. I find people that have grown really fast without using how to content. So I'll say things like, well, let's look at Gary Vaynerchuk or let's look at Grant Cardone or let's look at Lewis House or Brene Brown or Mel Robbins. None of them are posting traditional tutorials, how to content over and over and over and over again. And so what happens in step number three, when I use that counter example, it gets people to go, oh my God, I never thought of that before. I never realized that before. So now what we're doing is we've gotten people to, we've raised their curiosity with a polarizing or curiosity driven headline and title. We've lived in compassion and got them to self-identify because we wrapped a problem in the compassion part and a very specific problem it has to be a specific problem because we need their subconscious to go, oh, they're talking about you. Then we find a counter example or use a metaphor or we can chunk up in order to discredit that tactic or misconception. Now notice I have not talked about a solution yet. I've not talked about benefits. I've not talked about a solution. So what I want you to do is to discredit that belief. Now let's talk about chunking up. Chunking up is applying that tactic as being true 100% of the time. So all I would say if I wanted to chunk up is I would say, look, if how-to content tutorials were the best way to build a business online, then everyone who used tutorials over and over and over again would be growing online. And we know that's not the case. In fact, that's probably why you're here because you're sick and tired of remaining unheard and doing tutorials all day long. So chunking up goes, what's the belief and is it true for everyone? Does everyone who do how-to content see the results that they want? So again, chunking up, counter examples, metaphor. Be quick, like three to four sentences is all you really need there, okay? Now what we wanna do is we wanna move to a high level solution. So what I want you to do now is to say, so how do we grow a business online or how do we do X, Y, and Z? We do this and you're going to stay very high level. You're not going to get into the granulars. You're not going to get into the specifics. And if you can back up what you're teaching when you're teaching it, then do it. And what I mean by that is if I said, so how do we get business online? Well, first of all, we have to be polarizing. Look at this video of Gary Vaynerchuk. Look at Simon Sinek's title over here. They stand out. They're not traditional. They're, they go against the grain. They raise curiosity. You need to do the same thing. So what I'm doing is I'm constantly finding examples while I teach. Okay. I don't want you to get into how to do it. I just want to tell, I want you to tell them what to do again, very high level. So what we're doing with this thought reversal is we're going to stay very specific in the problem but very high level in the solution, okay? Specific in the problem, high level in the solution. Now, all you're gonna do is after you teach that portion of it, you teach them what to do and you're very high level with it, I want you to have a call to action, which is if this resonates with you, if you feel like you're running this problem, you feel like you're suffering from this, this old tactic, DM me right now because I want to show you how I can help you implement this in your business. That's it. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to either do it as a video and post it online and you can boost it. You can pay for through play campaigns. You can do whatever you want to get more exposure on it. And I, if you have an email list, I would send this out as an email. Okay. So send it out as an email. Remember to provide a link to where you want them to DM you. Make it as easy as possible for them to DM you. And that, that, like that alone should, if you do it right and, and you're really effective in your communication, you should be getting people DMing you, especially if you already have some sort of audience. Now, this is tested. We've tested this multiple times. And actually, we've ran that framework, that process as an ad, and they've been some of our highest converting ads ever. Okay. And it really comes down to the um, blowing their minds, getting them to realize something they haven't realized before and describing a specific problem in the middle of it. 
to get them to self-identify, this is for me. You will have people DMing you, I promise, okay? So go ahead and implement that. Do it in the next seven days. Now, I have two more way, two more things for you to do. So if you're like, Brandon, okay, cool. I don't need any more things to do. This is enough. Well, no, you. I want you to do, I want you to do all of these, okay? When I say I want to get you guys results, I want people DMing you, I'm freaking serious about it. And I know there's a lot of people that are going to get caught up in their circumstances. Brandon, I'm too busy this week, or I have too much on my plate, or I have blah, 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 blah whatever it may be. Enough with the, with the, and I'm going to cuss here for a second. So if there's kids listening, go ahead and <laughs> this is your warning. But enough with the bullshit, guys. Enough. Just go do it. Like stop consuming all this free stuff and never doing anything with it. If you're serious about getting sales, I am literally telling you right now what to do to get someone to reach out to you to want to work with you. This is how you're going to be able to get a, a, get a sale. So go and do it and then let me know the results that you get. Okay. Again, I'm selfishly doing this. Yes, obviously we're here to serve you guys and to get you guys results. Number two is hearing your experience and how this plays out is going to hugely help me fine tune something we're working on. Okay. And for everyone that's a student right now, especially in our mentorship program, you guys are going to be pretty stoked to see what we're working on. Really excited. We're going to announce it at our NGM event in November. So I'm really excited for it. Uh, so go do that. So let's move on to number two. Number two is I want you guys to use common enemies and symptoms and mistakes. Okay. So for those of you guys that are students that are, are in NGM, you already know what a common enemy is. I, I don't think I've talked about it on the podcast publicly. So I'm gonna give you a brief little overview of, of what it is. And it's gonna require a little bit of work if you're not a student to, to get this figured out, okay? And you might have to do this a few times and, and it's just something to, to continually to work on. So let's talk about common enemy. I want you to do what, I, what I'm gonna call a common enemy post, okay? We're gonna be, uh, this is a post that you're gonna do. It could be, an image, it could be a video. Um, what I find is that it works really well when it's a written post. So if you want to do like a written post, whether it's a blog post, a social media post, whatever you want it to be. It could be a podcast episode too, if you want it to be, but here's what it is. It's a common enemy post. So one of the things that works really well on building a community or building an audience or rallying up someone towards something is to have a common enemy with them. So for example, like my common enemy, enemy that I use in my brand, I have two of them. I have society and I have um, the content circle of death. The content circle of death is this circle or tornado that you get sucked into where you do how-to content all the time, 95% of your content, 90% of your content is how-to content and you just remain unheard and all the gurus out there have created this, what I call this content circle of death. At the same time, uh, society is my common enemy because I believe society doesn't set us up to succeed. It actually sets us up to be an employee and doesn't even tell us how to be a successful employee. And there's just so, and I, I could talk for an hour on a lot of societal norms that cause suffering, but those are my two, my two things. And so what starts to happen is the longer you sit in my ecosystem, the more you we, we form a bond because we both dislike the same thing. And so what I have our students do, one of our messaging elements, is coming up with a common enemy. We have to come up with symptoms. So what are the symptoms that your audience is experiencing right now? And much like a doctor, that's what a doctor does. A doctor will sit there and go, what are your symptoms? And then they diagnose you. And what we wanna do is we wanna come up with the symptoms that our audience is having. So what problems do they have right now? And we're gonna give, we're just gonna create a name that you can diagnose them with. And, and so for me, it's, I, it's the content circle of death. If you have this, this, and this, and this, you are suffering and stuck inside the content circle of death and we wanna destroy that thing. I wanna break you outside of the content circle of death, okay? So you come up with some sort of enemy, common enemy name. The next thing is, is you have to create a list of symptoms and you have to get very clear on who you're speaking to. So this post is literally going to say, if you're an entrepreneur who's above six figures and you are experiencing, and I'm going to get very specific 
on the symptoms. You've been plateaued for three months or more. You're posting at least three times a week with how-to content tutorials. Your reach has, has been um, lowered. Your sales might even be going down. And I don't care you know, what revenue level you were at. Um, it doesn't really matter. And you feel like you have a message, but people just don't really understand it. Then pay attention because you may be stuck in what I call the content circle of death. So again, I call out their identity, which is course creator who's at $100,000 a year. And I say, you've been experiencing these problems. So symptoms, I'm diagnosing them with symptoms and they're so specific that they self-identify that as me. And then what I'm gonna say is, I'm willing to bet you are trying or you are doing this and I'm gonna list two or three mistakes. 70% of your content is how-to and educational content. In order to fix it, you're trying to do more of the same thing. And I'm going to go through the problems that they're doing or mistakes they're making that cause those problems. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is this, I'm going to talk about what did they do as a mistake to try to fix it. So again, let me recap. You're going to call out their identity first. So you get to pick who you want to attract. Number two, what you're going to do is you're gonna list the symptoms. Number three, you're going to tell them if they have those symptoms, they are suffering from, and you just create a name, a common enemy name. Number four, you're gonna say, in order, what you did to cause those things, I'm willing to bet you did X, Y, and Z, you have two or three things there. And then the last part is, and in order to try to fix that problem on your own, I'm willing to bet you've done this, this, and this, list two or three things there, and they didn't work. So again, we're gonna start with the identity, Next, we're going to the symptoms. Next, we're going to go to the common enemy name so that they can self-identify. Oh my gosh, that's me. Then you're going to have two, two types of mistakes. You're number one, that you're going to have the mistakes that they did that caused the problem. And you're going to have two or three mistakes they did to try to fix the problem. And then you're going to have the same call to action that you had on your thought reversal video. Now, this can go out as an email. This can go out as a post. This can go out as uh, whatever, a podcast episode. It doesn't matter. Now, here's the beauty in this, guys. I'm giving you seven days to do this, okay? And I'm promising you that if you have some momentum, this, this will probably get you at least one lead of someone who's interested in buying from you, okay? This will greatly increase the chances of you closing a sale within the next seven days. And even if you're already successful and you already see momentum, just do it anyways and you'll be surprised at how many people start DMing you. Now, because I'm giving you three tactics, you can actually do a, a post of either one of these every single day. So if you do the thought reversal one, great, do it as a video, then do it as an email. You can do that in two different days. The next day, do the common enemy post, do it as an email, do it as a post. So I'm giving you guys multiple pieces of content that you can do within the next seven days. Number three, I want you to pull your most popular educational piece of content. So you're gonna go back into the past, go back into the content that you've done in the past. And I want you to pull out your most popular educational piece of content. Here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna redo that piece of content, okay? And you're going to do it as an educational piece of content. Now, some of you are like, well, Brandon, you told us not to do educational content. No, I told you not to do it 100% of the time. We still want it. We still need it. Educational content still has a ton of value. What do you think I'm doing today in this episode? I'm, I'm giving you a framework. I'm, I'm teaching. I'm educating. Okay. So go back and do some, do some research. Like what, what piece of content has had the longest watch time, the most downloads, the most views, uh, the most interactions, the most comments, things like that. Go find it. And I want you to, to redo it, but I'm going to give you a very specific way to redo it. Here's what we're going to do. I want you to tell them in the first sentence, what they're going to learn, who it's relevant and right for based off of their problems and symptoms, and then tell them what it's going to do for them. So give us some sort of promise. So it would look something like this. Let's pretend I look back at my content and I've realized I did a piece of content on how to create engaging content. What I would do is I say, great. Okay. This is my most, this is the, my best piece of content and it's titled how to create engaging content. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to change the title of that video to incorporate 
a identity an identity. So it'd be how course creators can create really engaging content. And then I'm going to put some time stamp thing at the end. If it's relevant, you can do the same. So how course creators can create engaging content in five minutes or less. So now I went from very boring title, how to create engaging content to somehow now having something very specific, a time-based spe uh, uh, specific indicator and an identity in there. Okay. So you go ahead and do the same thing. Number two, when you start that video, what I want you to do is I want you to, again, start it by telling them what they're going to learn, the symptoms that they have that makes the, this video relevant to them. And then the promise. So it'd be something like this. Hey, hey guys, in this video, you're going to learn how to create really engaging content. Look, if you're the type of person that's been posting mostly how to an educational content, you've been plateaued for three months or more. And the only thing you've done is just post more and more content, try to fix out that problem. This is going to be exactly for you. Cause I'm going to show you one style of video that will absolutely get the most engagement you've ever seen on any video. So that's my promise. I had a promise. I had the symptoms in there and I had the, who this is right for. And I did it in like 30 seconds or less. And I want you to do the same thing. I want you to get them to self identify. This is relevant to me. Okay. Now this is where it gets fun. I want you to teach them in a tutorial format. I want you to teach them in a step one, step two, step three, step four framework or process. But what you're going to do instead of just saying, okay, guys, here's step one, you need to create a really uh, polarizing and curiosity driven title. No, I want you for every step that you have in your video. I want you to go through this process. I want you to state what the step is, give the promise of what that step is going to do for them. Tell them the problems that happen when that step is not done correctly. The mistakes that most people do to try to fix that problem that doesn't work. Then I want you to actually teach them what to do. And then I want you to give them an example of it so that their mind goes, okay, I get how that works. So again, you're going to state what the step is. You're going to give the promise of the step. So what that step is going to do for them, the problems that they're having because that step isn't working for them, mistakes they made to try to fix that problem that don't work, teach them what to do. So just teach them what the step is and then give a counter example or some sort of example. So they go, oh, I can see how that works. So let me give you, let me give you an example. So I would say, okay, guys, if you want really engaging, engaging content, um, we have to first start by creating really engaging titles. When this is done correctly, you will have people stopping the scroll almost every time, whether you're using a piece of content or an ad. Okay. That was my promise. Now, the problem is, is that most of you have really boring titles and they almost sound all the same. For example, if I did a video titled how to lose 10 pounds, there's 10,000 people on Instagram and YouTube with the exact same title. So I blend in now what most people try to do to fix this problem that doesn't work is they either just do more of it, thinking more content, more titles is what to do, or they're just super polarizing without any intention and it actually turns people off. So here's how you create a really engaging title. Take your title, put an identity in it, put a time-based identifier on at the end of it. Now let's look at this video from Gary Vaynerchuk. He titled it X, Y, and Z, and he did exactly what I told you to do. He has a, a, an identity in there. He has a time-based thing over here. That is exactly what you need to do, okay? And you're going to do that for every step inside the video. So every step has a process to it. instead of just saying, here's what the step is. And let me teach it to you. We have this influence and persuasion. So people identify, wow, this is for me. I am making that mistake. And what we're also doing is teaching to their subconscious. When we use an example so they can clearly see what we're talking about alive in action. Well, then they don't have to think they automatically get it. And the more you get your audience to go like, I can do this and I get it, the more effective it's going to be. But again, we're getting them to self-identify. Now, these are the three things I want you guys to do. And you can take all three of these and you could do one each day. You can do one as a video one day, one as an email the next day. And I want you to send it out to your audience and send it out to your people. Chances are you probably will mess up one of these things. And you do have to really understand your audience, understand their problems to really nail this stuff. But I also know that if you are able to do all three and you do 
all three as a video and an email or an image post, you're gonna have seven different pieces of content, at least six, and you can post one a day for each day. And I promise you, the chances of you getting people to DM you is really high. And, and it's gonna go through the roof, probably bigger than what you've ever seen. And at the call to action on every single one of these, whether you do a video, whether you do an image post, is the call to action, is to have them DM you to see how they can fix it inside of their business. So it's, look, if you wanna learn how to create really engaging content, send me a DM, here's my profile, send me a DM right now, let me know what the problem is, let me know uh, what your business is, and let's have a conversation about how we can implement this in your business. And that's a perfect opportunity for you to pitch something or uh, talk about your program or talk to them about how you can help them, right? So they're gonna be reaching out to you on how can I work with you. Now again, go implement this, no more BS, go do it, do the best you can. I don't even care if you don't think it's good. I don't think, I don't, it doesn't matter if you don't do it right, just go do it so we can learn and you can again, do it again and again and again. And hopefully you can do it within the next seven days. And I want you to DM me the results, okay? DM me the results. I'm not gonna pitch you guys anything in DM, so don't worry about that. I it literally, just want to know how your experience was, what results did you get, how did people respond, and how it worked out for you. And again, we get probably 2,000 downloads every episode. I, I know half of you won't do it um, for whatever reason. I know the other half will probably do it. And then even if you get results, some of you probably won't send me the results, but a good amount will, which means if, if it goes the way I think it will, I'm probably going to get swamped with DMs in the next seven days. And I will literally respond personally to every single one of them and have a conversation with you if you are able to get a result, okay? So if it doesn't work out for you, that's fine. You don't need to DM me and let me know it didn't work out for you. Try it again, do it again. And then when you finally get a result, DM it to me, okay? On Instagram and, and go ahead and do that. Uh, for those of you that have questions, if you're a student, just ask them in the Facebook group, okay? and I can help you out with this. So I'm gonna be prepared to be in the Facebook group helping you guys out with this if you're a student. If you're not a student and you have a question, well, become a student and then you can ask me that question. And that's just the, the best way to do it. Okay, so that's it for this episode, guys. It's a totally different style of episode. We're changing some things up and this is literally dedicated to you to just get it, go out there and get a client and within the next seven days. I mean, I don't know how, uh, how else to put it. Just Just go do it. If you if you want a client and you've been listening to any amount of time and you believe in my messaging philosophy and you believe in um, the way I, I like to communicate and position things, go give it a shot. DM me when you get a result. That's it. Peace out. Let me know how it goes. Good luck. Hey guys, thank you so much for checking out another episode of the New Generation Entrepreneur Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, go below, hit the subscribe button, and make sure you click on that bell icon and get notified every time we drop a new episode. Now, if you're looking for the show notes, we have them linked underneath this video, as well as our social media handles and some links to free training and offers that we drop from time to time to help you guys even further. So go check those out if you're interested. And thank you so much for tuning in to the New Generation Entrepreneur Podcast.